Recently, I gifted my daughter a mini PC, but she's finding keyboard and mouse a bit too taxing. The operating controllers are a little expensive and I'm a total cheapskate. So I found her a controller that was blue and even works on the Switch. Surely it'd work on a Windows PC too, right? Well today, we're gonna find out if I made a $30 mistake. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So this is what came in the post. It's an 8-bit DOE Ultimate C Bluetooth controller. There's another version of this, which is 2.4 GHz, but I'm assuming this is more compatible with other systems. But looking around this box, it only mentions the Nintendo Switch. Inside the box, we have a charging cable. This one's USB to USB-C. We get a manual, which is... Uh... Ah, who cares? Let's get to the controller. And first impressions, it's light and very pretty. It's definitely way up there with the high quality that 8-bit Do are known for. And even if the D-pad's in the wrong position, it feels very comfortable. It's light to touch with a nice pivot, and in our opinion, even better than the one on Nintendo's Pro Controller. It's not written anywhere on the advertising, but it wouldn't surprise me if these are Hall Effect sticks. And these face buttons feel like Smarties. They're light, but bounce back as you'd expect. All in all, pretty good for a cheaper variation. On the top we've got four shoulder buttons, but as this is a Switch controller, both L2 and R2 do not have analog functionality. If we move to the top we have the pairing button, a USB-C port, and a little light. And along the bottom we have four LEDs, indicating which player this is assigned to. On the back we don't have any more buttons, but we do have this weird grip thing. And if... <laughs> nice. So yeah, it feels pretty great. But does it work on a computer? Let's find out. We'll first use the included cable from controller straight into the front of our computer. Windows detects it as a switch controller and what the cr... So while it looks like the inputs are at an all night rave party, the controller is somewhat usable as when you hit L3, we get a virtual keyboard. And if we mess around with the analog stick, we can even move the mouse cursor. The D-pad is functional and the triggers operate as left and right mouse buttons. And then even if the USB Windows looks like it's tripping massive, Steam just works. And here we have it in game, Broforce. All the buttons are working as intended, and there appears to be no issues in regard to latency. So let's see what happens when we remove the cable. Pairing via Bluetooth. And we're connected. It appears is exactly the same controller. And as before, it works fine in Steam. But how is it if we use a different launcher? Well, we tried Fortnite from the Apex game launcher, and at first everything seemed hunky-dory. And then this happened. What the f So even in game, the L3 stick pulls up the virtual keyboard. Oh well, some buttons work. Um. Uh, come on, open. Melok. Oh, no. oh, the buttons do not. This is probably why they can't sell this controller as being Windows ready, as we can't configure it at all. But thankfully, there is a workaround. As Steam understands how to use our controller, we need to add the Epic Launcher as an on-Steam game from within it. So if you want to play Fortnite or anything from Epic, we start the Epic Launcher from here, then once we're in game, we can use our controller as intended. Each button is detected correctly, and there is no need to reconfigure. Watch me do a Dragon Uppercut on this guy. Shoryuken! I mean, Shoryuken! If you don't want to load up every time from Steam, another workaround is to use an 8-bit dough Poo Brown Dongle. With this, you can connect a Bluetooth controller without using any software. You just push this button and it'll pair up. And with this one, it also translates it to an Xbox 360 control pad. So, let's give it a go. So there's a the controller. And here's how it responds. And even without using Steam, it's recognized perfectly. Connecting the controller to a Steam Deck, we have no issues whatsoever. And it works very much like using Steam on a full-blown computer. 
But in games, the buttons are flipped around. It's probably a good job to go in here and turn off Nintendo button layout. Ah, much better. Of course, it does work on the Switch. Just pair up the controller, and you're ready to go. So all said and done, this controller is pretty decent. It's comfortable, light, responsive, and pretty much everything we need for a controller. The only real issues are triggers not being analog, and the need to use Steam or a Pooh Brown dongle when using Windows. If you don't mind any of that, then this is a great controller, especially for the Switch. What we need to decide is if the features really justify the difference in price. Having analog triggers would definitely help in racing games, or emulating systems such as Dreamcast, Xbox, or PlayStation 3. And paying a bit more would give us software to customize sensitivity. We'll have a few more buttons, and allow us to switch between more systems at the back, whereas the Ultimate C is designed to be a one-trick pony. So was this a $30 mistake? Yeah. While editing this video, it turns out that 8-Bit Doe are just about to release a variant that specifically targets the PC demographic. My daughter won't care about the Switch at all come next month, and man, what if she starts wanting to drift? Whoop! I'm a Sari.